Well, it was, I think, New Year's Eve 1979. And my parents called me to say that there was someone on the phone for me at 6 p.m. Late, funny, very strange hour for someone to call. I was 19 years old. The name Numa Libin meant nothing to me at all, except it sounded very foreign. And uh, so I picked up the phone, I said, hello. And he said, um, the founder of Nimbus Records said, hello, George, my name is Numa Libin. I love Mars Bars and I hate Wagner and I want to make a recording of your music. And I, it's one of the rare occasions in my life when I felt I might put the phone down because this didn't seem entirely um, plausible. But in fact, uh, I think he really did dislike Wagner and he certainly did make a record and what has followed since is now 35 years of collaboration. Unbelievable. I remember having a discussion with my teacher, Messiaen, before uh, I had any hope of having my works recorded. And I remember saying to him, uh, gosh, you know, will, will I ever have a record of my music? And he said, don't worry, such things, they will happen. And I didn't entirely believe him. So when the opportunity arose to record my first chamber pieces, when I was only about 20, 21, I of course was absolutely thrilled and I can still remember when the first copy arrived. And it was an LP, old playing, you know, one of those old vinyl records. And it was an in incredible thing to feel that this held my music in it. My feelings about recording haven't changed at all really over the years. Of course, the recording industry has changed colossally. Shortly after my first record came CDs, and now even though CDs of course still exist, they're not what they used to be. And then the internet and the capacity to record and download pieces of music is just phenomenal today. But in the end, it accounts for the same thing, which is that a composer wants their music to be heard. And uh, to have a recording which people who are interested can listen to, and to help your music travel, beyond these shores to, to perhaps far, far away. Such things are, are incredibly valuable, really wonderful. Also, it has to be said that I'm a performer. When I was a decent pianist, which I don't consider myself anymore, I used to record my early piano pieces. The very first thing I did for Nimbus was record my piano sonata. And um, I think all but one or two of my piano pieces have been recorded under my fingers for Nimbus. But more than that, I'm a conductor and a good three quarters of my output has been recorded under my baton with Nimbus. And even though I don't absolutely at all believe that my recordings are definitive, or that other people can't do them an awful lot better than me, all the same, the way a composer conducts his own music does count for something. And therefore it's really great to have um, those recordings available. What's particularly great about having this association with Nimbus is that unlike many recording companies, larger ones, international conglomerates in particular, I think every single recording I've made in the last 30 years is still available. It's still out there. So uh, that's, that's really wonderful. Most people would think it would be easiest for a composer to conduct their own music than any other, easier than any other music. But it's not entirely the case. It's true, one has more authority immediately with one's own music than anybody else can ever have. And it's true that you know the piece and the music and the way it was written more profoundly, more in depth than anybody else can ever know. But that can be a hindrance. In the end, the conductor isn't, to, isn't there to display how the piece was written or to analyze it. He or she is there to help produce an excellent performance, a performance with vitality, atmosphere, drama, shaping, and also, perhaps I'd say more than that, to inspire and to help the musicians to play together, to play well, to phrase and breathe and make a good sound on their instruments with confidence. And uh, a composer who is too shut in the world of his own piece and is nervous that they're conducting their own piece uh, can harm their own piece, in fact. Uh, by being too reticent or by being too tense or more likely by being over emotional and the challenge for performing one's own music particularly when it's new is to try to expunge and forget the sometimes quite stormy feelings that went into the piece 
and that you imagine the piece encapsulating and to have a certain form of objectivity so that you can be clear and you can think what the conductor needs to do. Because in the end the conductor is there not to emote or to show off. In the end his purpose is to help the musicians to play the piece well. And for that you need a degree of clarity and I say again detachment. And to get detachment for your own works is very hard. It's possible and as the years go by perhaps one gets better at it but it's a challenge. Yes, recording piano figures is a very strange thing for me to do because I recorded it the day before my 50th birthday. And I can remember how beautiful the landscape around Wyaston looked and it was a wonderful, sunny, crisp, gorgeous, perfect um, late January day. Um, well, there was coming immediately after that a 50th birthday concert for me at the Queen Elizabeth Hall which started with me playing this piece. And so I felt I had to practice a lot. And it's a piece which is meant to be quite easy. It was written for the hands of pianists, so it's, the notation is simple. The stretch of the hands is very small, but it's also in places extremely difficult to play. So I practiced very hard. I did a lot of work on it. You know, I haven't listened to the result for either ever or for a very long time, so I can't remember how good it is. I'd be surprised if it was very good because I don't play the piano as regularly as I used to. And as I said, the piece is rather hard. Um, I should listen to it to see if it's okay. But, or, or, but in the end, um, Nimbus's uh, approach to recording uh, has always been, and I agree with this, you take big takes, you do complete performances, and then you patch where you need to. So I probably did a couple of performances, and it's possible they went better than expected. Uh, I think there was a little bit of patching. There was one recording I did, I remember, um, in about 1985 of an early orchestral work, A Mind of Winter, with the London Symphonietta and Penelope Wormsley Clark as the soprano soloist. I remember that because we recorded it uh, in a church near the Barbican and something weird happened and we got from the beginning of the piece to the end of the piece ten minutes later and it was virtually note perfect. And, there's not a, and it's a piece that would be very difficult to edit, but there's not a single edit in it. It's a complete performance. Now that's an ideal and rarely possible, but it's something to aim for anyway. Um, written on skin up to now is by far the biggest piece that I've ever written. I put everything into it. I felt I had a magnificent text to set my music to. I, I simply tried the best I could and I did feel that I couldn't have done better when I'd finished it. But I, one has no idea how the outside world will react to it and of course uh, you, I had confidence that I would have the most wonderful performance and the most wonderful director looking after it. But then you have to wait to see how it goes. But in the end the singers were magnificent, the orchestra was magnificent, the production was superb and the piece got through. And um, I have to say I was astonished by the reaction to it and remain rather bemused by it but at the same time very grateful that the piece that I put the most into has had the most warm reception of any of my works up to now so I can't complain.